Hi, I'm Gracie from P3, and today I'm going to give a tutorial on how to create a relatively basic Mechanum Drive program in Blocks Programming. Now, before starting this, make sure your robot is configured and that the wheels on your robot point in to form an X. Otherwise, this program will not work and your robot will not be able to drive properly. So then the first step is to create a new op mode and you can name it whatever you want. And we're going to want to keep the basic op mode as the sample and then just hit OK. And then the next thing we're going to do is reverse the direction of our two right wheels. And this is because uh, when a motor is given a positive power, by default, it will spin in a counterclockwise direction. However, since with the four wheel drive, two of the motors are facing a different direction than the others, we're going to want to reverse the direction of the right wheel, of the right motors so that all of the wheels will be spinning in the same direction when given a positive power. And just to clarify, on my chassis and many of the chassis I've, chassis I've seen, it's the right motors that are facing a different direction from the left motors. But if your chassis has something different, then you'll need to look at it to see which motors you should reverse the direction of. So then next we're going to go down to the loop. And this while block is going to be running in um, repetitively while the op mode is active. That's what the uh, wait for the op mode is active is, and then the while op mode is active. And this will be repeated many, many, many times a second so that the robot will be very responsive. And inside that, we're going to start by creating a new variable, uh, and we're going to call it forward. And we're going to set that to be equal to the negative gamepad one dot left stick y or if you have a different driving setup that you prefer prefer you can use different joysticks but i'm gonna tell you the one that my team likes best and then we're gonna also create two more variables strafe and turn and strafe will be equal to gamepad one left stick x and turn will be equal to gamepad one right stick x and these variables are going to form the different components of our mechanum drive now if you don't know uh, mechanum drives, mechanum wheels can lead to holonomic drives due to the fact that they have those little rollers at a 45 degree angle. On a drive using classic wheels, the force of the wheel will be directed at an angle 90 degrees to the axis of rotation, the axle of the wheel. But with the mechanum drives, because of those rollers, the force is directed at a 45 degree angle to the axis of rotation. So that means that by uh, moving the wheels in various combinations, we can get the robot to go in any direction. If we have two wheels on the diagonals of each other going in the same direction uh, and the other two wheels going in the opposite direction, then the robot will be moving sideways. If the wheels are all moving in the same direction, the robot will go forward or backwards. And if two wheels on the right side are going a different direction than the two wheels on the left side, then the robot will be turning. So these three variables will tell us the components of which direction we want the robot overall to be going. So then the next thing to do is to grab some set power blocks and we will start by setting our power with the front left wheel. To do that we're going to need two math equations with them uh, nested together. And in the first slot, we are going to add our forward variable. So just go over to variables and grab forward. And we're going to want forward to remain positive because, as I said, in order for the robot to go forward, all four motors will be going in the same direction. So for every motor, forward will be positive. And we'll keep strafe positive as well. And we'll also keep turn positive. Next, we're going to do the back left motor. And for this one, uh, as I said, forward will be positive, but we're going to make um, strafe be negative. So change that math to say minus strafe. And this is because back left and the front left are both are not diagonal from each other. So we want them to be spinning in opposite directions when strafing. And then turn will be positive since back since they're both on the left side. So we want them to be going in the same direction when turning. Next, we will do the front right motor. You can just make a duplicate of this to save yourself some time. And remember to change the front left and the back left to be your other two motors. So front right and back right. 
and forward will be positive. Like I've said, we're going to um, turn straight negative since the front right is a cross diagonally from back left. And turn will be negative since front right is not on the left side with the front left and back left. And then for the back right, forward will be positive. We're going to make strafe positive as well since back right is diagonal from front left. And turn will be negative since it's on the right side. So now this uh, program will work. Your robot will be able to drive and strafe and work very nicely. But there's a few things that we can add to make the driving a little easier on your driver and to make sure that it goes in the proper direction. So the first thing we're going to do is help with a problem that sometimes happens in which the little equations we made, like the forward plus strafe plus turn, that can add up to be over 1. And if you don't know, the set power has a range of negative 1 to 1. So having it set a power to, say, 1.4 would lead to it really only running at 1. And if you have a motor that is not running at the full speed that it's supposed to, then the ratios between the four different motors will be off and it'll go in a different direction than intended. So as a way to fix this, we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call it denominator. And we are going to set this equal to the maximum. You will find that under the math category. And uh, although it'll say sum, you'll just drag over it. It'll say sum of list and change sum to max. And then we're going to go over to list and we're going to create a new list. And then we're going to click on the blue gear and remove one item so that our list has two items. Inside that, we're going to grab a uh, number from the math and we're going to set that equal to one. And you can get rid of that gear. And then we're going to get a math equation. We're going to want these nested like how we did with the motors. So just put another one inside of it. And we'll want these all to be addition. And then if you see, there's a block that's absolute. So that will take the absolute value of whatever value is placed after it. And um, in this nested equation, we're going to want to be adding the absolute value of our variable forward plus the absolute values of strafe and the absolute value of turn. So what's happening here is that a list is being created with two values, one and the sum of all three of our vari variables, the absolute value, so that it'll be the greatest possible power that we might be setting a motor to. And then th the denominator variable is being set equal to which either, whichever of those two values is greater. So if the if the sum of the three variables is less than one, then denominator will equal one. And if it is greater than one, then it'll equal, say, 1.4. And then the way that we can use this is by dividing each of our motor powers by our denominator. If none of the motor powers would be greater than one, then denominator would equal one. So the powers will not be changed. But if the motor uh, power is meant to be 1.4. Like I said, this will mess up the direction that will be driving since the ratios between the four motors will not be what it's meant to be. So by dividing them all by denominator, we'll get it so that the highest motor power is 1 and the others are smaller so that they keep the same ratio and the robot will be going in exactly the direction that we intended. So grab the math block and we're going to divide all of our motor powers by denominator and make sure that you're dividing the whole series of equation by denominator and not just one part of it. All right, so now our robot will be driving in exactly the direction we want. And there's one other trick I like to add into my drive programs. I find it helps the drive team a bit. What I like to do is make sure that there's a button that can be pressed on the driver's controller that slows down the speed of the robot. This helps with more precise driving, like for instance in Freight Frenzy. If you're going all the way across the field or into the warehouse, uh, you're, you, want, you want your robot to go top speed. But if you're lining up to place freight in the shipping hub, you want to be able to go slowly so that your driving can be very precise. So to do this, grab an if block. And if you're new to programming, an if block is under the logic tab. And it only runs if the condition that you place next to if is 
true. So if the code that we're going to be placing next to if is true, then the code next to do will run. And if it is false, then that code will be skipped over and it'll go down to the set denominator. And then there's also variations of if blocks such as if, else if, or if else code. Uh, but we're just going to be using an if block, no else's. So then as our condition, we're going to want, uh, in my case, I'm going to choose the gamepad one right bumper, but any button on your controller will work. You can pick whatever you want. And then as for the do, we're going to divide each of our three uh, component variables, forward, strafe, and turn, by some factor. Uh, personally, I like to divide it by a factor of two, which means that the speed will be cut in half when the bumper is held, but you can change that to whatever number you want. So then you'll go to the variable tab and you'll grab set variable two. Uh, there's only gonna be one for those. You'll have to change the variable to forward strafe or turn by clicking on that middle block. And you'll, you're gonna set it to a math equation of forward divided by whatever factor you like. And then you'll do the same for strafe and turn as well. So now on each loop, your code will look to see if the bumper is being held. And if it is, it'll cut the speed in half. So this concludes the tutorial, but please experiment with this code and see if you can find any other tricks that'll make driving easier for your drive team. Good luck and have fun.